was in need and I needed a friend. I was alone and I needed a hand. I was going down, but someone rescued me. My God cares too much to say. His mercies are new every day. I get down to pray and then help is on its way. I was in need and I needed a friend. I was alone and I needed a hand. I was going down, but someone rescued me. My God cares too much to say. His mercies are new every day. I get up to pray and then help is on its way. I walk by faith and not by sight. If things go wrong, it will be alright. Cause someone's greater. Is watching over me. My God cares. My God cares too much to say. Mercy. His mercies are new every day. I get up to pray and then help is on its way. It's go wrong, it will be alright. Cause someone greater is watching over me. My God cares. My God cares too much to say. His mercies are new every day. I get up to pray and then help is on its way. My God cares. My God cares too much to say. His mercies are new every day. I get up to pray and then help is on its way. I am serving a living God. His name is Jesus Christ. He died and rose and gave the peace. Victory, I have victory. I am serving a living God. His name is Jesus Christ. He died and rose and gave me victory.
Father's way. My God cares. My God cares too much to say. His mercies are new every day. I get up to pray and then help is on his way. My God cares. My God cares too much to say. His mercies are new every day. I welcome everyone to the Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. And I pray that the Bible study will not be in vain in your life. It will not be in vain in my life. I said it will not be in vain in my life. I will not be in, I will not come in vain. I will not learn in vain. And the pastor will not teach in vain. It will do good in our lives. Amen. Father, we thank you for our Bible study. Thank you for your people, our brothers and sisters, our fathers and mothers, our children, boys and girls, our invitees, members, and everybody. We're asking, Lord, that tonight you'll bless everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Your word will enrich every life. Amen. Your word will cleanse our lives. Amen. And if there's anything that should not be there, the resurrection power of Jesus will take everything away in Jesus' name. Bless your people tonight. Show them your love. And let the power of your word and your love work wonders in every life. Take every problem away. Let your resurrection power be alive here today in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Sit down. We're coming to John chapter 20 today. As we look at John chapter 20, we're reading from verse 1. The first day of the week comes Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and sees the stone taken away from the sepulchre as we read that verse you know we're talking tonight and teaching tonight on the resurrection of the lord jesus christ i need to back up a little bit you remember that his earthly ministry now had been concluded and he said i finished the work that the father appointed for me to do he had said earlier that my will and my need is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work and eventually now he's finished that ministry the ministry of preaching the ministry of proclaiming the gospel and the ministry of telling people about the love of the father and how we can reconcile what the father after concluding all that then the betrayal came he was betrayed not only that eventually he was judged and the jewish people decided with the romans and the gentiles that he must be crucified even though pilate had said i find no fault in him he repeated it again i find no fault in him he brought him out and said the third time I brought him out. Behold your king. Behold the man. I have no fault. I find no fault in him. But the Jewish people cried, crucify him. Crucify him. Away with him. We don't want to have anything to do with him. And so they crucified him. And then on the cross, there were two other male factors crucified. One on this side, the other on that side. And one of them said, if you are the Savior, like you said, why don't you help us and we'll come down from the cross. And the other fellow said, why are you talking like that? He has done nothing wrong. Even those people knew that he had done nothing wrong. And eventually he said, Lord, remember me when you come to your kingdom. And he said, today you will be with me in paradise. He died. And he put him in the grave and he rolled a stone on it 
so that no nobody will roll up or roll that stone away and then bring him out but on the first day of the week the stone was rolled away and jesus rose from the dead and that's what we're talking about today what we're learning today about the resurrection of the lord jesus christ the certainty and the evidence of christ's resurrection but why are we studying that it's not just to have head knowledge and just to say yes i heard the story yes i know the story and i know about the story and i know the steps of the crucifixion of christ the reason we're studying it is because of what it does for us and the identification we have with the lord jesus christ look at romans chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 6 romans chapter 6 verse 6 they say knowing this that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed that is forth we shall not serve sin the reason we're studying this is that we'll see what happened to christ and we'll see our identification with christ he was crucified and we are crucified the old man the adamic nature is crucified with him so that the body of sin the very foundation of sin and the very source of sin from that old man crucified will be totally gotten rid of destroyed and henceforth we will not serve sin anymore you will not serve sin anymore it is us in Galatians chapter 2 talking about his crucifixion and our identification in that crucifixion with him. It says in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the face of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. There you see that again it says we are crucified with Christ. And it says, but nevertheless, we're still living. It is not that we're physically crucified, we're spiritually crucified. And it is not our body that is crucified, it is our sinful soul, the old man, the Adamic nature that is crucified. Because now we rise with him, and now we live with him. And as we talk about his resurrection, we partake of the power of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and so he says i live and not just that i live i live by the strength and the power and the face of the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me let's come back to romans chapter 6. in romans chapter 6 we'll see now that we were crucified with him it's going to tell us another thing about his death he died and so we too were died with him and he was buried and were buried with him again spiritually that the old man the adamic nature the sinful propensities they are dead buried and totally taken away by his power look at romans chapter 6 verse 4 therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the father even so in the same way in like manner we also should walk in newness of life for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection you understand what we're studying is crucifixion his burial and death and then the resurrection it is so that we will know and understand it is so that we will experience and live out that resurrection of the lord jesus christ chapter 7 of romans in romans chapter 7 it says in verse 4 wherefore my brethren ye also are become dead to the law by the body of christ by identification with christ were dead to the world and dead to the law old testament law the mosaic law 
that ye shall be married to another even unto him who is raised from the dead that we should bring forth fruit unto god you will be fruitful and now that he rose again and what is the implication of that for you and for me colossians chapter 3 in colossians chapter 3 reading from verse 1 if ye then be risen with christ you see the conclusion there he rose from the dead and we are identified with him and we rise with him spiritually and we're not living the life before the cross we're living the life after the resurrection if ye be risen with christ seek those things which are above where christ is seated on the right hand of god set your affection on things above and not on things on the earth for ye are dead and your life is in with christ in god when christ who is our life shall appear then shall ye also appear with him in glory any any amen on that side he's coming again and he says because we're crucified with him he says because we died with him he says because we're buried with him and he says because we're risen with him now when he comes he's going to take us home to the heavenly father uh, look at verse 1 again it says if ye then be risen with Christ seek those things which are above look at this now where Christ sits on the right hand of God he rose he showed himself to his disciples and now he says he's gone back to heaven and he's seated on the right hand of God look at Ephesians chapter 2 Ephesians chapter 2 I'm reading from verse 6 and he has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus he's made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus you know what gives us the victory is crucifixion that gives us the victory we're crucified with him is death that gives us a victory because we died with him the old man is dead and all that adamic thing pulling us down with the force of gravity all that one is dead and not only that we are buried with him all the shame of the past and the punishment and everything consequence of our sin all buried and taken away from our sight and even from god's sight and condemnation is gone and then we rose again with him and we rose to live in newness of life and not only that now we're seated in heavenly places together with christ jesus and so you understand what we're studying the resurrection of the lord jesus christ is not just telling stories and you know repeating the stories about the crucifixion and about the death about the burial and about the resurrection and i pray that his resurrection power will walk in every one of our lives even tonight in jesus name tonight we're looking at the message the certainty and the evidence of christ's resurrection the certainty and the evidence of christ's resurrection we're actually studying today from chapter 20 of john verses 20 verses 1 to 23 1 to 23 there are three points we're looking at number one the clear evidence of the resurrection of christ no doubt about it and i said there shouldn't be any unbelief in any heart because he is risen and here we have the clear evidence of the resurrection of christ point number two a convincing encounter with the risen christ this is not theory this is practical this is something visible this is something that actually took place a convincing encounter with the risen christ number three the confirmed experience you are going to have an experience today 
an unforgettable experience a life transforming experience because of the resurrection of jesus christ the confirmed experience by the reassuring christ the confirmed experience by the reassuring christ number one now is the clear evidence of the resurrection of christ the clear evidence of the resurrection of christ we're coming to john chapter 20 and i'm reading from verse 1 the first day of the week that sunday the seventh day of the week is saturday and that concludes that week and then another week begins the first day of the week cometh mary magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulchre and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre as she runneth and coming to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved do you know his name John and says unto them they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre and we know not where they have laid him hold on she wasn't thinking of resurrection she didn't remember resurrection she forgot that Jesus had said he will be crucified he will be nailed on the cross he will die he will be buried and on the third day he will rise again she had forgotten and Peter had forgotten and John had forgotten and all the people had forgotten and so when she got there that's Mary Magdalena and she saw that the stone had been rolled away and she couldn't find Jesus Christ in the grave because he's not going to remain in the grave just like you are not going to remain in that problem tonight it says in verse 3 and peter therefore went forth and the other disciple and came to the sepulchre so they ran both together and the other disciple did outrun peter and came forth to the sepulchre there were two of them peter and john and they ran they were so eager what has happened she is telling us that the stone had been rolled away and christ is not there where is christ where is our savior where is our master where is the one that died and where is the one that was buried so they ran and it says the younger one that is john outran peter but then when he got there he couldn't go in but peter came there and went in stooping down look at uh, verse uh, look at verse five and he's stooping down and looking in saw the linen clothes lying yet when he not in that's john then comes simon peter following him and went into the sepulcher and sees the linen clothes lie and a napkin that was about his edge not lying with the linen clothes but wrapped together in a place by itself then went in also that other disciple since peter has gone in now that encouraged him and that gave him some boldness and gave him some outgoing uh, spirit to go in there which came forth to the sepulchre and he saw and believe that is believe that the sepulchre was empty for as yet they knew not the scripture very important as yet they knew not the scripture peter john mary as yet they knew not the scripture the disciples that had been with jesus for all these three and a half years and i taught them and repeated that he was going to die and he will rise again yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead must rise again from the dead in verse 10 then the disciples went away again to their own home they went back sorrowful when they should be rejoicing and they went back doubting when they should be believing and they went back christening and wondering what has happened when they should be affirming that christ is rich risen but you know why verse 9 for as yet they knew not the scripture what does that mean they knew not the old testament scripture 
they knew not the new testament interpretation of the old testament scripture that says he will rise again they knew not the new testament scripture that says he will rise again it is possible for somebody to be coming to the church two three years more than that and yet not know the scripture that shows that he must have a risen resurrected life it is possible to even have some miracles of increased bread and some miracles of job provision and some miracles of healing it is possible to say i believe in christ he is lord his son of god is this and that and yet not know the scripture that says he must rise again and you must rise with him what was he talking about when he said the new notch the scripture i'm coming to psalm 16 and we're reading from verse 10 psalm 16 verse 10 this is what they should have known but they didn't know in psalm 16 verse 10 it says for thou will not leave my soul in hell that is in the grave neither will thou suffer thy holy one on to see corruption they should have known that because that's the old testament that's the psalm that every israelite read every time and they should have known that that is talking about christ how do we say that is talking about christ look at the new testament interpretation of that in acts of the apostles chapter 2 acts of the apostles chapter 2 that's what they should have known but they didn't know that's what they should have remembered they didn't remember it says in acts chapter 2 verse 25 verse 25 new testament acts chapter 2 verse 25 for david speaketh concerning him concerning the lord jesus i foresaw the lord always before my face for he is on my right hand that i should not be moved you will not be moved therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope look at this because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell in a grave neither wilt thou suffer than holy one to see corruption that's written about christ and it was written in the old testament that's the scripture they didn't remember that scripture and so when they saw that the grave the tomb the sepulcher was empty they couldn't make anything out of that and they were confused but now it says look at verse 28 thou has made known to me the ways of life thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance men and brethren let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us until this day. Therefore, being a prophet, look at this, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up he would raise up he would raise up christ to sit on his throne he's seen this before speak of of what of the resurrection of christ that his soul was not laid in hell neither his flesh did see corruption this jesus as god raised up whereof we all are witnesses and so you can tell this is what they didn't know they didn't remember the scriptures they were reading and the old testament if they remembered when they saw the empty tomb they would say praise the lord christ is risen look at chapter 13 chapter 13 of acts of the apostles acts chapter 13 for you to understand that this had been recorded and this had been written in the old testament so that the people as they saw the empty tomb they would have realized christ is risen thank god we know thank god i know thank god you know christ is not in the grave the certainty of his resurrection and the evidence of his resurrection he is risen we're coming to acts chapter 13 and i'm reading from verse 29 acts chapter 13 verse 29 
and when he had fulfilled all that was reaching of him they took him down from the tree from the cross and laid him in a sepulchre but God raised him from the dead did you hear that but God raised him from the dead your savior is not on the cross our savior is not on the cross you know there are people that you know they hang the cross on the neck and they put the cross in their ears and they bring the cross you know they, they wear the cross they think it's still there on the cross i want to serve you notice it's not on the cross anymore jesus is risen and you are risen with him it's a day of joy it's a day of excitement and it's a day of his power it's the day when the resurrection power is in operation and operative in your life and everything that is dead will come alive in jesus name look at verse 31 and he was seen many days of them which came up with him from galilee to jerusalem who are his witnesses unto the people and we declare unto you glad tidings good news for you today how that the promise which was made unto the fathers god has fulfilled the same unto us their children in that he has raised up jesus again as it is it is also written in the second psalm you see that it says thou art my son this day have i begotten thee and as concerning that he raised him from the dead now no more to return to corruption he said, on, on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Wherefore, he says also in another psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. And so you see, it's referring to the Old Testament and it's giving us assurance from the Old Testament that Jesus must rise again. And he rose and then he talks about scriptures he says they forgot the scripture they didn't know the scripture they didn't remember the scripture what scripture i've shown you two scriptures in the old testament we're looking at isaiah now isaiah chapter 30 25 isaiah chapter 25 and i'm reading from verse 8 Isaiah chapter 25 verse 8 he will swallow up death in victory you see that that that's a prophecy concerning Christ that that one is coming the very son of God he is coming his name shall be called wonderful counselor the everlasting father and is the prince of peace the government shall be upon his shoulder and it says he will swallow up death in victory the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. You didn't hear that one. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from all the earth. The Lord, for the Lord has spoken it. The resurrection was going to happen for the lord had spoken it and the disciples did not remember that's why when they saw the empty tomb there was confusion within them there was depression within them it's like what has happened to our lord who has taken our lord away it is resurrection chapter 26 of isaiah isaiah chapter 26 verse 19 thy dead men shall live look at that thy dead men shall live that's resurrection somebody has died and is buried and it says he shall live resurrection will take place and then it says in verse 19 together with my body shall they arise it says all the other dead people together with my body that's christ talking that's the lord jesus christ he said i'm going to raise up other people too because when i rise up i'm going to make that power of resurrection to work in every life look at that again now it says thy dead men shall live together with my dead body shall they arise awake and sing ye that dwell in the dust 
ye that dwell in the dust what does that mean not that they are dwelling lying on the ground but they are dwelling there inside the dust and he says awake and sing that's resurrection and as he talks about that he says for thy deal is at the deal of herbs and they shall cast out the dead and the earth shall cast out the dead that's resurrection but they had forgotten all about that that after somebody had died especially the lord jesus christ our master is dead is in the doors then he wakes up he rises up and then he says the earth will even cast out the dead resurrection i said resurrection apart from those old testament scriptures we now have new testament scriptures that jesus christ had spoken don't you understand the words of the old testament that the words of god and the words of jesus christ that the words of god he said i said nothing of myself as the father has spoken unto me so have i spoken not only that god who at sundry times and in old times is speak by the prophets now he's speaking unto us by his son so all the old testament was their scripture they have forgotten that all the words of jesus christ that he spoke before he went to the cross they are also the scripture and that they forgot let me show you we're looking at matthew chapter 16 and i'm reading from verse 21 the words of scripture from the lord jesus christ that they forgot and so when they saw the empty tomb they couldn't know what to make out of that we're looking at matthew chapter chapter 16 verse 21 from that time forth began jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. You see that? He prophesied. He said that this scripture, New Testament scripture, and be killed after the killing, after the death. What follows? Tell me then. Tell me out aloud. Are you sure he rose again? I was sat in the rose again yeah. and be raised again the third day. They forgot all about that. I will not forget the word of God. Mark chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 9. Mark chapter 9. And we're reading from verse 9. Thank God we're not serving a dead Christ. We're serving a risen Christ. And that resurrection power must walk in your life today. I said it must work in your life today. Hey, look at this, Mark chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 9. Mark chapter 9, verse 9. Here it tells us, And as they came down from the mountain, he charged them that they should tell no man of what they had seen till the Son of Man were risen from the dead. He said, it's going to happen. And everything you have learned now, hold it on, hold on to it, and then you will say them, you will teach them, you reveal them when the Son of Man is risen from the dead. Look at verse 10. And they kept that saying with themselves, questioning one with another, what the rising from the dead should mean. They didn't understand, and they didn't ask. They didn't understand, and they didn't investigate so that they will know that same chapter 9 I'm reading from verse 31 look at verse 31 for he taught his disciples and said unto them he taught his disciples the teaching of Christ that's part of scripture that's part of scripture and this is the scripture it says that forgotten the son of man is delivered into the hands of men and they shall kill him and after that he is killed tell me he shall rise the third day he shall rise the third day there's certainty about the resurrection of jesus christ there is evidence about the resurrection of jesus christ there's pronouncement he proclaimed it he told them that i'm going to die they will cause the death but then the power of the almighty will raise me up the third day look at verse 32 but they understood not that saying and they were afraid to ask him him. they understood not and they were afraid to ask him Luke 
chapter 18. In Luke chapter 18, we're reading from verse 31. Luke chapter 18, we're reading from verse 31. Then he took unto him the twelve and said unto them behold we go up unto jerusalem and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the son of man shall be accomplished amen, amen. give me a good amen. amen all things written concerning the son of man shall be accomplished i'm sure you are, you know now that everything the lord has written concerning you will be accomplished amen. not a judge will be missing not a dot of an eye or cross of a T will be missing. Your life is going on to accomplishment. But now talking about Jesus Christ, look at verse 32. For he shall deliver, for he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, and shall be mocked, and spitefully entreated, and spitted on. Look at verse 33. And they shall scourge him, and put him to death. Tell me the rest there. And the third day he shall rise again. Do you see that in all the scriptures? Always the third day. He didn't say second day. He didn't say seventh day or tenth day. Every time he spoke to them. And they should have remembered that. And three days should not be forgotten. Now he's been crucified. One day is gone. Two days gone. This is the third day. The first day of the week. They should be going to the sepulchre. They should be going to that place with expectation. And with excitement. Knowing that whatever Jesus has said. Heaven and earth may pass away. But my word shall never pass away and what he's telling us heaven and earth may pass away but his word shall never pass away his promise will never pass away and you know he said he is coming again in my father's house and many mansions if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for who is that now for you and then he says if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again that won't you you must not forget that one we must not do like the disciples of jesus they forgot they didn't know they didn't remember the words they are spoken about his resurrection and the church today you in particular myself as well we should not forget that christ is coming again he's coming again I said it's coming again. Look at chapter 24 of Luke. Luke chapter 24. And I'm reading from verse 44. Luke chapter 24 verse 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I speak unto you. While I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. You will understand and said unto them thus it is written and thus it behoved christ to suffer and to rise again from the dead when the third day the third day he always emphasized that and they should have looked for that they should have understood that the empty tomb meant our christ is risen our lord is risen the grave can, could not hold him, and the grave will not hold you. Amen. The power of the Gentiles will not hold you. Amen. And the power of those uh, Roman people will not hold you in Jesus' name. Amen. He rose, you must rise. Amen. Out of that grave, I said you must rise. Amen. And whatever it is that is trying to hold you down, that power will be broken tonight by the resurrection power of Jesus in Jesus' name. Amen. Number one, the clear evidence of the resurrection of Christ. Point number two now, a convincing encounter with the risen Christ. How I pray that tonight your coming will not be in vain. You will have an encounter with Christ. And when you see the risen Christ, the resurrection power in his life will flow into your life and blow everything that should not be in your life in Jesus' name. We're coming to John chapter 20, and I'm reading from verse 11. John chapter 20, verse 11. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping. I want you to go back to verse 10. Then the disciples went away again to their own home. Well, the tomb is empty. 
They couldn't remember that Jesus said to us again. They didn't remember all the other scriptures. And so they went back home. But Mary stood there. You see, there is a manifestation to somebody that will stay there. He will not go and say, I must see the end of this thing. I must see the meaning of this thing. What is it? Where, where have they taken my Lord? And she stood there. You know, if you wait upon the Lord, it will renew your strength. If you stay there and you will not go and you say, I will not go, I will not be denied, something must come to you today. Look at this, verse 11 now. But Mary stood without her sepulchre weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre. As she was weeping, she said, There must be a meaning to this, and I must see something here. And she looked into the sepulchre and sees the two angels sitting in white sitting. The disciples, Peter and John, did you see the angels? No, they didn't see the angels. They just looked very quickly, very quickly, and then they went back home. But she stood there and she said, Let me look at this sepulchre again. I must find my Lord. You'll find your Lord tonight. And so as she looked, she saw two angels, the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of jesus had lain and they say unto her woman why weepest thou she says unto them because they have taken away my lord and i know not whither where they have laid him and when she had said she had thus said she turned herself back and saw jesus standing and saw jesus standing somebody there tonight will see jesus and knew but she knew not that it was jesus jesus said unto her woman why weepest thou whom seekest thou she supposing him to be the gardener saith unto him sir if thou had borne him hence tell me where thou hast laid him and I will take him away. Jesus says unto her. Jesus says unto her. He knows your name. He knows your house. He knows why you are weeping. He knows the trouble. And when he calls your name tonight, just one word, your tears are wiped away. But 16, Jesus says unto her, Mary. She turned herself and says unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. And Jesus says unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and to your father, and to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord. You didn't see him, Peter, because you didn't wait. John, you didn't see him because you didn't wait. You were in a hurry to go back home, but I stayed there, I stayed there, I stayed there, and I saw the Lord. And I saw the Lord. The people who see the Lord are the people who wait there. I must have salvation. Before I go, I must have salvation and the Savior will appear to you. The people who are sanctified and the people who wait there, I must be sanctified. The sanctifier must do something in my heart. They are not, they are not in a hurry. I'm going back home. I'm going back home. They see the Lord and they are sanctified. The people who are filled with the Holy Ghost are the people that wait. The people that wait. And the people that tarry. Tarry ye there in Jerusalem until ye be endured with power from on high because he shall receive power i'm talking to somebody there now he shall receive power after the holy ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem judea to the eternal part of the earth the holy ghost will come upon you and so mary magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the lord and that he had spoken these things unto her but you know what he told what jesus told her come back to verse 7 
17 and Jesus says unto her touch me not I am not yet ascended to my father but go to my brethren go to my brethren he called the disciples brethren called them brethren they were saved he called them brethren their names were written in heaven he called them brethren they were children of god and say unto them i are saying to my father and tell me your father my father your father you see there are people that say that those disciples were not born again they were not born again while jesus christ was still on earth with them here but no they were born again he said go and tell them that i'm going to my father and i'm going to your father and then i go to my god and your god was that something new come to mark chapter 16 mark chapter 16 you'll find that the disciples are the brethren the disciples are his brethren members of the same family mark chapter 16 i'm reading from verse 9 now when jesus was risen early the first day of the week he appeared first to mary magdalene out of whom he had cast out seven devils that was all the past the past was no more look at verse 12 in verse 12 it says and after he had appeared in another form unto two of two as they watch he went into the country we're coming now to john sorry we're coming to matthew chapter 28 matthew chapter 28 i read from verse 7 and then i read from verse 10 matthew chapter 28 reading from verse 10 and sorry verse 7 and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead and behold he goeth before you into galilee there shall you see him and lo lo i have told you he called them that verse 7 disciples go tell his disciples now look at verse 10 those that were called disciples look at verse 10 now then jesus said unto them be not afraid go tell tell me my brethren that they go into galilee and there they shall see me you will see him they were called disciples and now he himself he calls them my brethren Look at this in Matthew chapter 12, Matthew chapter 12, verse 48. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 48, but he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother and who are my brethren? Verse 49, he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren he stretched his hand to his disciples and said behold my mother and my brethren for whosoever shall do the will of my father which is in heaven the same is my brother and sister and mother when you come to the lord jesus christ and you turn away from your sin and you turn to him to be your savior and you say i don't will not be my savior and um, other gods will not be my savior philosophy will not be my savior religion of the elders will not be my savior and i will not be my own savior i cannot save myself but jesus and jesus alone will save me and then he gives you grace and he gives you the truth and you are walking by that truth and you are learning of him and you are following him the disciples are the brethren of jesus christ i'm one of the brethren of jesus christ i said i am one of the brethren of jesus christ you are the lord confirm it in jesus name in luke chapter 10 luke chapter 10 i'm reading from verse 17 luke chapter 10 verse 17 and the 70 returned again with joy you are going back home with joy saying the lord even the devils are subject unto us through thy name and he says unto them i beheld satan as lightning fall from heaven behold i give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy over all the power of your enemy 
and nothing shall by any means hurt you any day any week any month end of the year nothing shall by any means hurt you but look at verse 20 verse 20 notwithstanding in this rejoice not because the spirits are subject unto you but rather rejoice because because your names are written in heaven how is it that some people say that the disciples were not born again they were not members of the family of god before jesus died of course they were born again and they were members of the family of god and they were brethren to the lord jesus christ and now he said to mary go and tell my disciples and tell them i go to my father and, I, and he's your father i go to my god and he is your god how did that happen and how will it happen to anyone that wants to be a child of god today in second corinthians chapter 6 second corinthians chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 17 it says wherefore come out from among them come out from among the smokers among the routers people among the nightclub people among the gamblers come out from among the sinners turn away from your sin come out from that gang come out from among them and be ye separate says the lord and touch not the unclean thing and i will receive you he will never cast anyone away that comes whosoever comes to me i will no way cast away or cast out then he says i will be a father unto you and you shall be my sons and my daughters says the lord almighty i missed an amen over there yeah. romans chapter 8 romans chapter 8 and i'm reading from verse 14 romans chapter 8 we're reading from verse 14 romans chapter 8 reading from verse 14 it says in verse 14 for as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god i'm one of them for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba father go and tell my disciples that I go to my father and your father and I go to my God and your God and now because we are born again because we're children of God because we have turned away from sin and because his blood has washed us whiter than snow we can call him Abba father because we have the spirit of God living within us and because we are walking according to the path of righteousness held by the grace of God held by the power of the spirit that dwells within us we can call him Abba father because we feel his love and we feel his affection and he says he has received us and we have received him we call him Abba father and because of that we know his father is our father and his God is our God he tells us in verse 16 and the spirit beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God Make that personal and the spirit bear it witness with my spirit that i am a child of god i am a child of god look at verse 17 and if children then heirs heirs of god and joint heirs with christ if so be that we suffer with him that we may also be glorified together look at verse 29 of that chapter 8 romans chapter 8 verse 29 for whom he did for known, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren and so you understand when he said go and tell my disciples i go to my god and to your god i go to my father and your father i'm a child of god hebrews hebrews chapter 2 hebrews chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 11 hebrews chapter 2 reading from verse 11 for both he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified are all of one for which cause is not ashamed to call them 
brethren we're saved and when we're saved become sons and daughters of god we go beyond that salvation and then we plunge ourselves into the blood of the lamb and by the blood of the lamb we're cleansed we're purged we're purified and it says now as we're sanctified he even points at us and he shows us to the angels and he says it's not a shame to call them brethren not only that he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified are all of one you see sanctification is not only unity among the believers it's the unity of the believer with jesus christ what he loves you love what he hates you hates what he does you, you do and everything that is about his life is reflected in your life he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are united are all of one and because of that he calls them brethren he calls us brethren we're looking at um, romans uh, sorry hebrews chapter 8 and i'm reading from verse 10 hebrews chapter 8 verse 10 it says for this is the covenant that i will make with them the house of israel after those days says the lord I will put my laws in their mind and write them in their hearts i will be to them a god and they shall be to me a people remember what jesus said he said i go to my god and your god and here god said i write my law in their hearts and put it in their mind and i will make them to walk according to the way of the lord i'll be god to them and they will be my people look at chapter 11 hebrews chapter 11 and i'm reading from verse 16 hebrews chapter 11 and i'm reading from verse 16 but now they desire a better country we're going to a better country we're going to heaven we're not going to stay in this a polluted world forever but we're going up there we'll be there yeah. i will be there i will, be there. I will see you there yeah. we'll be there in jesus name yeah. but now the desire a better country that is and heavenly wherefore god is not ashamed to be called they are God. You see that? I go to my God and to your God. I go to my Father and your Father. It says, therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. He has prepared for us a city. He has prepared for me a city. You must be there. First John chapter 3, verse 1. First John chapter 3 and i'm reading here from verse one behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of god therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not beloved now are we the sons of god when are we the sons of god once you repent from that point of repentance, now are we the sons of God? Once you look up to the Lord Jesus Christ and say, Jesus, I come to you, save me, and he saves you, you are at that moment child of God. I'm a child of God. And he gives you the grace to live in the newness of life. And once that grace is there and he helps you to live in that righteous life, you are now at this very time the Son of God. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not beloved now are we the sons of god and it does not yet appear what we shall be but we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him Amen. for we shall see him as he is and every man every man every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure can you see here identification with christ he was crucified you're crucified he died you are dead to sin he was buried and so you are buried 
he rose again and so you rise also to newness of life he's ascended into heaven and is now seated at the right hand of the father and you're seated together with him and then he says when he shall appear we will see him and then you will be like him for you'll see him as he is but he says every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law for sin is the transgression of the law and ye know that she was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin come back to that verse 5 make it personal now and I know that he was manifested to take away my sins to take away my sins to take away my sins and in him is no sin you know if something is taken away you'll not find them anymore look up here we had chairs here one two three four five six all the members of the orchestra they are the chairs there when they were playing the instrument and now before the preaching they came and he took the chairs away are they here now i said can you see them here now the same thing in your life that scene there one two three four five all those scenes and those spirits were sitting on them and they say will ruin his life will corrupt his life and those things were there and now jesus came he drove those spirits away Amen. and then all the sins what did he do to your sin i can't hear my people he took all your sins away and so whether you are here or you are at home or anywhere you are he's taking the sins away they will not be in your life anymore in jesus name look at that verse 5 again it says and ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin whosoever abideth in him sinneth not i abide i will not sin i said i abide i will not sin whosoever abideth in him sinneth not whosoever sinneth has not seen him if the sins are still there he has not taken them away neither known him they'll be taken away tonight Amen. little children little children let no man deceive you he that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous he that committeth sin is of the devil you will not be of the devil Amen. sin must get out your life completely sin internal sin external sin in talking and sin in action everything will vanish away he that committed sin is of the devil for the devil sinned from the beginning for this purpose the son of god was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil whosoever is born of god who is that i said whosoever is born of god who is that that's you whosoever is born of god does not commit sin for his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he's born of god in this the children of god are manifest and the children of the devil whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of god neither he that loveth not his brother you see jesus appeared to mary and as jesus appeared to mary he said now you see me that i'm risen. go and tell my disciples go and tell my brethren that i go to my god and your god and i go to my father and your father it was an encounter with the lord jesus christ a convincing encounter that jesus is truly risen again you'll have your own encounter we come to point number three now the confirmed experience by the reassuring christ the confirmed experience by the reassuring christ we're coming to john chapter 20 and i'm reading from verse 19 john chapter 20 verse 19 the same day at evening being the first day of the week 
when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews came Jesus and stood in the midst that is in their midst and says unto them peace be unto you peace be unto you in verse 20 when he had so spoken when he had so said he showed them his hands and his side then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Verse 21, then said Jesus unto them again. Then said Jesus unto them again, peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so have I sent you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. And saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins, ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins, ye retain, they are retained unto them. You must experience this tonight. You must have this tonight. What are you having tonight? Come back to verse, uh, come back to verse 19. In verse 19, uh, then uh, the same day at evening, this is a good evening, an evening of blessing, Amen. evening of joy, Amen. evening of impartation. Amen. That evening be the first day of the week when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled. For fear of the Jews came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. You know that we can have peace now through the Lord Jesus Christ. Peace in our heart. Peace in our mind. Peace in our spirit. Peace in our soul. Peace in our family. Look at, look at Romans chapter 5 verse 1. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You make him the Lord of your life, the master of your soul, the captain of your salvation. And you are following after him as your perfect example. And say, I know no other person, only Jesus I know is my saviour is my lord peace will descend inside your soul in ephesians ephesians chapter 2 ephesians chapter 2 and i'm reading here from verse 14 ephesians chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 14 it says in verse 14 for he is our peace he died for us on the cross of calvary so that all the sorrow will vanish away all the confusion will vanish away all the fear of future judgment will vanish away all the confusion that we normally experience because we're not sure of the future all that confusion will vanish away for he is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us and he has abolished in his flesh the enmity even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man so making so making and he says in verse 16 and uh, he that he might reconcile both unto god in one body by the cross having slain the enmity thereby and came and preach preach peace unto you which are far off and to them which were near now we have the peace of god i have the peace of god Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, we're reading from verse 7. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and your minds through Christ Jesus. Yeah. That peace you can have today, 
the peace that passes understanding and you know if we're going to make it at the rapture if we're going to be with the lord forever and ever that peace must keep on flowing there second peter chapter 3 in second peter chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 11 seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of god wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the element shall melt with father it is it's saying that all the people are collecting together today and are spending their lives only for sand and stone and wood and oil or whatever they are gathering together everything will go up in the flame everything will go up in flames and everything will be forgotten but we who stay with the lord and we have the peace of god we have the pardon of god and we have the salvation of the lord in our soul will abide forever verse 12 nevertheless we according to his promise look for the new heavens and the new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness verse 14 wherefore beloved seeing ye look for such things be diligent that she may be found of him tell me in peace without spot and blameless don't allow anything to touch that peace don't allow anything to take away that peace don't allow anything to disturb the peace you have in christ but you know if sin comes in it will disturb that peace it will remove that peace there'll be confusion there'll be sorrow there'll be you know oppression in their heart but when you say sin stay far away evil stay far away and all those uh, terrible habits stay far away then the peace of god will remain and abide in every one of us in jesus name the peace that passes understanding we're coming back to john chapter 20 john chapter 20 a confirmed experience the experience we have in the lord the experience we have as we have this personal encounter with the lord and we have this uh, kind of a touch connection with the lord it also seen in uh, chapter 20 verse 21 chapter 20 verse 21 it says then said jesus to them again Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. You know, look up here. There are some people that say, you know, it's only the ordained preachers who are supposed to be preaching. It's only those who have gone to seminary who are supposed to be preaching. It's only those who are maybe pastors or ministers or these leaders who are supposed to be preaching. Other people, they say it another way. They say only the men are supposed to be preaching, but the women, they are not supposed to be to preach. Look at that verse 21 again verse 21 it says jesus said unto them again tell me first peace be unto you and there's no full stop there all the people that have the peace of god in them peace be unto you if you are saved if you are born again if you are justified and you have the peace of god those same people that have the peace of God, children of God, justified by faith, were peace with him. They are the people he now said, as my father has sent me, even so send I you. We're coming to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. I'm reading from verses 17 and 18. It says in chapter 17, verse 17, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth once again remember it's not only ministers that are supposed to be sanctified it's not only men that are supposed to be sanctified it's not only ordained uh, preachers that are supposed to be sanctified the sanctification is for everyone because jesus died and he paid the price for your sanctification for my sanctification on the cross of calvary verse 17 sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth look at verse 18 as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. All the people who are sanctified 
by the sacrifice of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, by the offering of the body of Christ, all those who are sanctified, they are supposed to also take on, verse 18, as my Father, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. We're coming to Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, and I'm reading from verse 15. Mark chapter 16, reading from verse 15. It says in verse 15, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You have, you know, every creature, every creature is not in church. Every creature, you know, some of the creatures are by your, by your, com your community. Some of the creatures are in your village, and some of the creatures are in your town, some of the creatures are in your office. And I, although I'm a preacher and a pastor, I cannot come to your community to your office and to your village and to everywhere you are there and you are said to everyone go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved people will believe through your preaching they'll be saved through your preaching You'll tell them the word of the Lord and they'll come out of their sin. They'll come to the Savior in Jesus' name. And then he says, See that believeth not shall be damned. We're coming to Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. And I'm reading from verse 46. Luke chapter 24, verse 46. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning where at jerusalem we're coming to acts chapter 26 acts chapter 26 and i'm reading from verse 16 acts chapter 26 reading from verse 16 but rise and stand upon thy feet for i have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister amen, amen. and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which i will appear unto thee delivering thee from the people and from the gentiles unto whom i now send thee is sending you amen. to open their eyes you'll open their eyes to turn them from darkness to light, you'll turn, turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Can you say that? I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Let the Lord hear you. Say that again. Now your conscience must bear your witness. Because you know, there are people that say, I have not been disobedient to the heavenly vision and they never talk to anybody and they never preach to anybody and they've never shown christ the savior to any sinner but if you want this to be a reality in your life from today that you'll be able to say truthfully you'll be able to say sincerely you'll be able to say without any shadow of doubt i was not disobedient to the heavenly vision you must speak up that challenge today as my father has sent me even so have i sent you you will do it in Jesus name Amen. Romans chapter 10 I'm reading from verse 13 Romans chapter 10 and I'm reading here from verse 13 in Romans chapter 10 reading from verse 13 it says for whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved whosoever a sinner comes calls upon the name of the Lord and he says I repent I turn away from my sin I hate my sin now and I will not go that simple direction anymore and I'm calling upon the Lord to be my Savior to be my Lord he will not deny you of salvation he will save you for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved look at verse 14 how then shall they call on him in whom 
they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard if you don't tell them if you don't announce it to them if you don't proclaim it to them how shall they believe if they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher in your community be the preacher in your fellowship be the preacher in your village be the preacher anywhere you find people around you there be the preacher and how shall they preach except they be said as it is written how beautiful at the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings good news of good things the early church all went out and they did it the church of today will all go out we will do it Acts of the Apostles chapter 8 I'm reading from verse 4 Acts of the Apostles chapter 8 and we're reading here from verse 4 it tells us in verse 4 it says therefore they that are scattered abroad went everywhere what were they doing preaching the word they that were scattered abroad what does that mean you know we're gathered together now in church for Bible study and what we have learned we internalize and the grace of god comes in us and the grace of god makes us now to be obedient children of god and then you go to that street i go to that street and you go to your houses and we scatter abroad we scatter everywhere and it says as we're going everything we have learned we're going to give to the people we go on preaching the word in jesus name we're coming back to john chapter 20 verse 22 now john chapter 20 and i'm reading from verse 22 here it tells us in verse 22 john chapter 20 and when he had said this he breathed on them he breathed on them he breathed on them and says unto them receive ye the holy ghost the lord jesus breathed on them and say receive ye the holy ghost what's the meaning of that what's the implication of that what's the result of that and what is the effect of that in the lives of those disciples i'm coming to job chapter 33 job chapter 33 and i'm reading here here from verse 4 job chapter 33 and we're reading from verse 4 the spirit of god has made me the breath of the almighty has given me life the breath of the almighty has given me life you see all those disciples yes they were alive but you know they were depressed they were discouraged it was like they were in the darkness it was like they didn't have the excitement and the life and the upliftment to move out and do something and jesus breathed on them it says the breath of the almighty has given me life and now they wanted to live and now now they wanted to do the will of God because he breathed on them. Psalm 33, I'm reading from verse 4. In Psalm 33, verse 4, Psalm 33, Psalm 33, I'm reading actually from verse 6. Psalm 33, verse 6, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth heaven's made and all the host thereof by the breath of his mouth he breathed on them and then he said receive ye the holy ghost receive the holy ghost Amen. john chapter 14 i'm reading verses 16 and 17 john chapter 14 verses 16 and 17 here it tells us and i will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that she may abide with you for how long forever the holy ghost you get here when you go back home the holy ghost will still be there the refreshing you get here when you get back home the refreshing will still be there and the joy of the spirit and the peace that comes through the spirit you get here when you get back home is still there in jesus name and the power the power the power of the holy ghost you get you get in church when you meet those the giants and goliaths outside that power rise up and defeat them because the holy ghost will abide with you forever verse 17 even the spirit of truth whom the 
world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but she know him for he dwelleth with you he dwelleth with you and shall be in you when he said receive the holy ghost it means he wanted the holy ghost to be present with them and to be with them like partners and to be helping them and they shall be in you that will be on the day of pentecost that spirit will come with mighty force and mighty fire and mighty energy coming from heaven in jesus name first corinthians chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 12. first corinthians chapter 2 we're reading from verse 12. it says now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of god that ye might, that we might know the things which are freely given to us of god is giving you a lot you will receive tonight in jesus name salvation free sanctification free holy ghost baptism free healing free deliverance free and they answer to your prayer tonight tonight free for you in jesus name Come back now to John chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 23. John chapter 20. And we're reading from verse 23. Whosoever sins, ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins, ye retain, they are retained. What does that mean? Uh, that remit means remission. That means to remove. Whosoever sins, you remove they are removed how do you remove somebody's sin by telling him of jesus christ who died for us and through whom we have the removal of sin the forgiveness of sin redemption from sin remission of sin when it says whosoever sins you retain they are retained they are ignorant of what can wash away their sins they don't know and you don't talk to them you don't tell them you don't enlighten them you don't teach them you don't evangelize them then their sins are retained just because you are not telling them just because you are not informing them it is when you inform them their sins will be remitted there will be remission of sin come to matthew chapter 26 matthew chapter 26 i'm reading from verse 28 matthew chapter 26 verse 28 and this is my blood of the new testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins tell them tell them that is the blood of jesus that will remove their sins and in that way you remit their sins they come to repentance and their sins are washed away luke chapter 24 i'm reading from verse 47 luke chapter 24 reading from verse 47 it says in verse 47 and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name it is when you preach it it is when you declare it it is when you enlighten the people it's when you show them they'll know how their sins can be removed how their sins can be remitted forgiven it says that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at jerusalem verse 48 and ye are witnesses of these things you are tell them Amen. and their sins will be forgiven Amen. you'll tell them you'll show them the savior they will be saved in jesus name Amen. we're coming to acts chapter 10 verse 42 acts chapter 10 reading from verse 42 and he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead and to him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive what remission of sins you tell them and as you tell them and they believe whosoever believes in him will have remission of sins romans chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 23 romans chapter 3 reading from verse 23 for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in christ jesus whom god has set forth to be a propitiation 
through faith in his blood through faith in his blood through faith in his blood that's what you tell them what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of jesus you tell them that blood and as they believe they are cleansed they are converted and their lives are made anew it says to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of god and as they believe their sins will be cleansed. Their sins will be taken away. Hebrews chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 22. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. And almost all things have I the Lord purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. So when it says, whosoever sins he remit, they are remitted unto them. It doesn't mean that she will go around and say, forget about Jesus i remit your sin i forgive your sin i give you salvation i give you eternal life no you cannot do that you tell them about jesus and it is because you tell them that's what makes them to believe and that's make, what makes them to trust in the blood the cleansing blood of the lord jesus christ and whosoever will call on the name of the lord as you pray for as you preach to them and pray with them they will be saved i can see you having converts there I said, I said, you have converts, yeah. and people are going to get to heaven through you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Now, in Romans chapter 10, verse 8, Romans chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 8. But what says it? The word is near thee, even in thy mouth. The word is near thee, even in thy mouth. Do you have the word of God in your mouth? and in thine heart is the word of god in your heart that is the word of faith which will preach that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus and shall believe in thine heart that god has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved resurrection the resurrection of jesus christ that's why it is so important that we emphasize the resurrection and now we have a clear evidence of the resurrection we have a convincing encounter through that resurrection and we have a confirmed experience of the resurrection and it says now if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus that is you make jesus your lord and shall believe in thine heart that god has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved am i talking to anybody there yeah. thou shalt be saved verse 10 for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation there's no reason for anybody here not to be saved salvation is yours it's a free gift of god for you you believe in your heart you confess with your mouth that salvation is yours today because in verse 13 look at verse 13 for whosoever for whosoever for whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord tell me tell me tell the person near you there look at them don't look down. look at them whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved salvation available for everyone you have each go and tell other people they too they'll be saved you bring multitudes to salvation take multitudes to heaven with you in jesus name jesus is risen jesus is alive he has become our lord he has become our savior he's your lord tonight and he is your savior tonight rise up and declare my jesus rose from the dead my jesus rose from the dead and because of that resurrection i have salvation and because of that i have sanctification because of that i have the blessings of god because of that i have joy joy and i have peace that passes understanding tell the lord tonight you must go home with the blessing of his resurrection power